My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to a special San Francisco edition of Kramerica. I'll be able to make friends. I'm just trying to save you some money. My job, not just entertain, but put this one in context. Call me, 1-800-743-CBC, or tweet me at Jim Kramer. Look, the market got crushed today. Now tumbling 522 points. S&P plunging 1.71%. NASDAQ nosediving 1.79%. Why? Well, another 75 basis point rate hike from the Fed. Jay Powell's more or less saying he'll do whatever it takes to beat inflation. We'll be done when we are done. It's going to cause some pain in your pocket. But until the help wanted signs come down, until savings are diminished, until housing prices cool, until supply and demand get in balance, he fears correctly, I think, that we will be ravaged down the road. It's kind of pain now or never. Those words may sound harsh, but they'll be soothing later on. We don't know when. Once the Fed's job is done, Powell's tough on inflation stance will be good longer term, which is why tech stocks initially did bounce in response. That was a thoughtful response. But then the whole market rolled over, driven by shorter term worries about the collateral damage from a Fed mandated recession that we talk about almost every night. The thing is, Powell's creating and preserving long term wealth, even as he crushes short term value, because over the long haul, persistently high inflation is much worse for the stock market and almost any other asset class. And you, it's just bad for you. What matters, though, is that we're living in Jay Powell's head right now. Obviously, nobody wants to lose money because of the Fed. But Powell knows you can lose money in two ways. You can lose it now, as we've been doing in this incredibly awful year. Or you can see the value of your holdings erode gradually over time because of inflation. With a few years of high single-digit inflation, as we have now, the buying power of a dollar would be dramatically reduced versus where it is now. Powell's bringing the pain now in order to stop that from happening. So let me play with an open hand. As someone who lived through the 70s, I stay with Powell. I don't want my life savings or your life savings to be eaten up by inflation. Now, I know, sure, hey, uh, Kramer, uh, what, what does it mean to you? You saved a lot of money. Okay, that's true. But it doesn't make me wrong. No matter how much you have, it will be worth less in a world of embedded inflation. That's a fact, a historical fact. There is no instance where inflation raged and your stock holdings actually increased in value over time. Powell doesn't want to bet on whether he can be the first central banker ever to break that pattern. He refuses to roll the dice. So he's punishing us now in order to save us from financial purgatory later on. As is often the case, there are two broad camps emerging as Powell vows to stay tough until the job is done. There's the short-term camp, and we saw them in action today. Sell, 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 sell. He's worried he'll slow the economy too, too hard, throw many people out of work in the process, and really crush earnings. He may overshoot and cause a recession. Powell said he's that is collateral damage from bringing down inflated wages, and he's willing to do it. These people sold stocks right into the bell, betting we open down big tomorrow. And we were up right after the, the different the Q&A. That's what Powell has to put himself through. Remember, we're in Powell's head, and he's thinking we have too many jobs and too few workers. That's what's causing relentless wage inflation. And central bankers worry most about wage inflation because it's sticky and it spreads throughout the whole system. Powell can't create new workers, but he can make fewer job openings by raising rates to the point where companies cancel their expansion plans and even hit us with significant layoffs. Given that he says he's keeping rates, uh, raising, going to continue to raise rates, well, you know what? Despite what these people did with the Q&A, it is pointless to ask when this will be done. It'll be done when it's done. It'll be done when the help wanted signs are replaced with no help needed signs or now leasing signs. Powell isn't worrying, geez, I'm going to hurt the stock market here with this tough talk. Not at all. If anything, he's worried stocks are too high as people have lots of money left from COVID transfers from the government. He wants you to deplete your savings in order to force more people back to work. You may think this is a brutal way to beat inflation. It really is. But it's the only tool the Fed has in its arsenal that can do the job. So when the news breaks, the short-term camp runs and buys the recession stocks. Yeah, look, today was a good day for it. General Mills reported an amazing number, and stock went higher. But all the staple stocks over, overly went higher uh, over time in the day because money managers believe Powell can't beat inflation without causing a possibly severe recession. And you're going to hear that for days on end. 
So remember, I said it to you, it's what you're going to hear. The camp predominate today. It will predominate over multiple days. They doubt Powell uh, at every turn. They will bet he'll overshoot. They think he's not any good at his job. But now let's take on a second camp, the one I would call the silent majority. After a classic Nixon era piece of political ledger event, I think the silent majority believes that Powell needs to do this because it's just not right that every time you go to the darn supermarket, things have gone up in price. The silent majority wants to be able to buy a house at a reasonable price without having a bidding war over it. The silent majority knows that their stocks are going to be worth less when they retire if Powell doesn't act now. The silent majority doesn't ever want to lose money. Nobody does. They're watching stocks bounce initially and then get slaughtered because the short-termers realize Powell's actions will make it harder for companies to make money. I don't blame the short-term gunslingers. Those estimates cuts are definitely coming, and when the estimates get cut, then what happens? Ah, stocks sell, sell, sell. go down. The prices of stocks are as visible as the scores on a scoreboard. Today, you lost because of Powell's actions. The short-termers also think that over the next few days, this will become more and more evident. So they want to avoid the Powell-inflicted pain now. I understand it, but I disagree longer term. I am with the silent majority on this one, even as I was not with them during the Nixon regime. I believe that not only has commodity inflation peaked, but we'll soon see housing peak. We'll have too many homes with too few buyers. If you didn't have to live in your house, if moving wasn't a nightmare, Powell makes you feel like you should sell it now and buy it back later at a lower price. That's right. He makes me want to short my own house, even as Lenard tonight said housing prices are still up big year over year. Powell didn't want to hear that. He also makes me feel like buying stocks that are coming down hard because he's so hawkish that I have to believe that he'll get wage inflation under control faster than people realize. Not necessarily because we're going into recession, but because we'll definitely have a long slowdown where every business has to adjust, but it won't be a disaster. The short-term camp is made up of people who either can't handle any pain or don't believe in Powell and want to get out ahead of others who think that it's going to really come down. The long-term camp, though, including me, knows that Powell's methods are serious, and we're going to see downward revisions of everything until it's clear that the inflation giant is slain and we start moving up again. The silent majority says, Mr. Powell, scorch my savings now because I know they'll be worth more later. The shorter terms don't even care. They act out of fear and myopia. They're why stocks close at the lowest level since June. They always score first, always. But the bottom line, I think Powell wins the game. And when he does, we'll be on the field. And the short termers will be at the bottom of the standings if they are still in the standings at all. Let's take some calls. Why don't we go to Kevin in Florida? Kevin! Hey, how are you doing, Jim? I am doing well, Kevin. How about you? I'm doing just fine. Thank you. And, and I'm so glad you, you uh, allowed me on your show because I've got a, cu- a couple of questions for you. Sure. I, I, I appreciate what you, uh, uh, your, the knowledge you impart to others. The, the, Thank the, you, the, Kevin. The, the call on, the, you are, and you're more than welcome. And we want, me and my sweetie watch you every, every night when we Thank enjoy you. it. <laughs> doing my um, best. You're I mean, tough, tough you here. Know, What's up? Well, okay. Well, look at this. What the deal is? I, I got a, a, a question about Eli Lilly and company. And just for the record, I, I work there in new product planning and in sales. Um, and, and and so um, and I I've, I've seen you had uh, uh, Ricks on David Ricks. He's yes, he's been fellow. on a couple times. Well, look, uh, let, let, let me just tell you, this is a big holding for my travel trust. We almost decided to buy some more now. We do fear that the drug stocks can go lower because there's a high price earnings multiple stock. But I think the future for Lilly is unbelievable for its weight loss drug. And I'm not even talking about what it may have for Alzheimer's. So I know you work there. And all I can tell you is hold on to it if you got stock and buy some more when it breaks to the 280s because it may do that because this market's so bad. Let's go to t- and thank you for those kind words because this is one tough job I got right now. Let's go to Tyler in California. Tyler. Hey, Big Booyah from California, Jim. How you doing? I'm looking for you. I don't see you right now, but I'm sure you're here. What's up? (laughs) All right. So looking at the charts for the potential uh, bear market plays, I want to know if you think there's a bottom on ticker KR, Kroger. Kroger reported a great quarter. They're doing a fantastic job. The stock sells at 11 times earnings. I think the bottom is in hand, but the chart's so bad, people keep selling and selling and selling. Let's say 43. Okay, how about that? Now, I think Pal wins the game. I feel very alone right now. Very alone. But I don't care. Because when he does, we will be on the field. And the short-termers will be at the bottom of the standings if they're on there at all. Oh, man, money tonight. Skyworks Solutions jumped higher. So uh, could this not be the solution to your portfolio? 
Uh, you know the Bears are more. I'm checking with the CEO. And the semiconductor space has become one of the most watched and hated sectors in this market. So where does Marvell Technology stand? I'm going to talk to the company's top brass. And Salesforce held its investor day after the bell from Dreamforce, highlighting a whole, they had a whole host of metrics that we got to find out more about. So we're going to sit down with the co-CEO, Brent Taylor. So stay with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.